Inversion of control, like many other design patterns, is quite a fancy term for a simple ID. With a few examples in JavaScript, I'll show how you can start using inversion of control right away. Let's dive into the code. My first example is that of using callbacks. I've got some code here which has a list of prices, some formatting functions, a rounding function, and then it formats those prices in a certain way so that these numbers become strings with a specific formatting. Now this code does not use inversion of control. There's some generic functionality here that is intermingled with specific functionality. The pattern of iterating over an array and then creating a new array, that is something that the map function can do in the standard library of JavaScript. But let's pretend the map function does not exist. We can implement it ourselves. We can refactor this code to use inversion of control by using the map function Again, I've implemented it myself now. Let's imagine it doesn't exist. This is a simplified implementation of the array map. This is, in terms of inversion of control, what we call framework code. This can be somewhere in an array util or indeed in the standard library of your language. Now that we've separated out the loop logic, we can have our custom specific code be very focused on what is specific in our application. So. Our rounding function and formatting functions have not changed. It's just that now we can basically say format our prices. And map is, of course, iterating over an array and calling this function for us. We still have the same output. It's just that this is now considered the call side. So the call side calls into the framework code. And the framework code decides to call your function whenever it needs it for that specific array item. And the fact that the framework code calls your function, the function that you have provided, the format function in this case, that is inverting the control. I have more examples, but that's the general ID. Map does the loop and the callback function you provide does the operation. And map doesn't need to know what operation you provide as long as you return something. And we want to separate the loop code because that can be generic code. We use this kind of stuff all the time. And the control that's being inverted is that the map function calls your callback function. Passing in a function lets the call site be in control of what is done. This is why array functions like map filter and reduce take in a callback function. Now this is a fairly simple example which doesn't have any edge cases yet. But imagine in our before code, before the refactor code, you would have lots of edge cases. Sometimes this could be an object, sometimes there's no price available. Now I've added the edge case of this array of prices sometimes being a number, sometimes being an object, and now our generic loop code is being littered with exceptions. So there's an if statement here which checks is the uh, price, dot price actually a number, then okay we need to run the format on that. And maybe this is not even correct, maybe we want to return another object, so this should become that same object again. And what happens is that these edge cases get littered throughout our loop code. So this is not clean anymore. There's two different things happening here. Inversion of control solves the problem of supporting all kinds of edge cases without making the implementation of map more complex or without making the interface of map more complex. The interface of this function map stays the same. If you want to do all kinds of things, sure, go write a more complex callback function. That's not a problem for map. Map doesn't care how complex your callback function is. It just uses its return value. Map calls into your callback function, it inverts the control when it needs to, keeping the implementation of the generic framework code simple and clean, and your specific custom code specific. Let's look at a second example, inversion of control in React. I've got a imaginary app here and we're looking at the homepage component. This app gets updated a lot and the server-side code, the Node.js code and the database version and stuff like that needs to stay in sync with the in-browser, with the React code. Because if they get out of sync, then you'll get errors. They expect different data from uh, different data formats from each other and stuff like that. Now, users have this app open all the time. They don't open it and close it when they're done. It's just open. So whenever a new version is released on the server, the client needs to get the latest code. There's a version check for that, the update check that basically says, is the database version the same as the app version? If not, then we'll have to run an error and we'll have to show an error to the user and tell them to refresh the page, otherwise they could not continue. Now this is the before version. There's no inversion of control applied here. You see that a page and probably any page is responsible for having this if statement here, this edge case where 
if this is true, then you don't want to render. No, instead you want to uh, tell the user they need to refresh the page. Let's refactor this with inversion of control so that this if statement is removed. The update check is a separate component, which is a generic component, which is used for all pages. I've decided to create an update check component and reference that a level higher. So not in my pages, but in my app uh, component. So that's my root level component. There's the update check, which receives the app version as a property. And it basically checks whether to uh, whether the version matches. And if it doesn't, it shows the error. And otherwise, it is returning, it is passing through the children that have been passed. So the children of the update check, that is the header and the outlet. I've used a React router here, so that this will render a page. The update check component has the responsibility to decide whether to render an error or to call rendering a page. This rendering is just via returning its child elements, prop.children. Now, props.children is not literally a function call, but the pattern here is that we are shifting control from the pages being in control of rendering an error when the version don't match to the framework. So the app and the update check are very generic components that are shared with all the pages and they are in control of deciding, okay, now I need to run an error or not. And if not, it will then yield control back to the page that can render itself. It's either rendering its own implementation or it's giving up control to its children. That makes it inversion of control. In this example, the generic code is the app and the update check and the specific code are all the pages. The generic code can just call the specific code, the custom code, when it needs to. My third example is that of dependency injection. Dependency injection or DI is a specific form of inversion of control. If you're unfamiliar with the DI, I've just made two videos about it. They're a recommended watch if you're not comfortable with the concepts yet. Now, dependency injection and inversion of control are related, but they're not the same thing. Dependency injection is a specific form of inversion of control. In dependency injection, the control that's being inverted is who is in control of what dependency is being used. Let's look at some code. This is an example I've shown before. In this case, the video upload controller is receiving a queue from the call site and it's just using that queue. This is dependency injection, this is inversion of control. What if instead it would be responsible to create its own queue, to create its own Revit and queue connector? That would be not inversion of control, not dependency injection. But we would like the call sites to be in control because now we can inject a fake for tests or a different implementation if we ever want to move to something different than a RabbitMQ specifically, but also the video upload controller is not tight coupled to the RabbitMQ connector, which is a nice thing because they're different responsibilities, they're separate concerns. Now that we've seen three different examples, let's summarize the principle behind it all. Inversion of control is custom code receiving control from the framework code. And in this definition, the framework could be any code that you want to be somewhat generic. Say in React, you have a button component, something you've implemented yourself. It's not actually an external dependency, but it is considered framework code for inversion of control because it is generic code. It is code you want to stay generic. You use this button a lot, but what often happens to generic code is that it gets edge cases in there. Oh, now it's used in this specific way. Now it's used in that specific way. Let's add an if statement here. It's never just an if statement, by the way. But these edge cases sneak in there and suddenly your generic component doesn't have a very nice interface to work with anymore. And it has lots of edge cases. Inversion of control kills the if statements. The official definition says that the framework has control for the generic things, but the framework gives control away when specific things need to happen. The most common reason to use inversion of control is that if you look at generic code, it makes the interfaces and the implementations of that generic code simpler because those if statements move to the call side. And the way I'd like to explain that is with a slightly different definition. Inversion of control is refusing to complicate generic code with specific code. When you notice you need to support more use cases in your generic code, when you are about to add if statements for specific custom use cases, stop yourself and ask yourself the question, can I invert the control here? You want to avoid that the generic framework code becomes more complex, that the framework code gets polluted with specific custom code. Instead, you offer the possibility for the call side to own that part. 
the call side can own the part that is specific, that is custom code. So you can keep your generic code nicely generic and clean. You are inverting control by moving just the right responsibility to the call side. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you liked it. I'd like to hear from you now. Was this easy to understand? Did I pick the right examples to explain the concepts? Please leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.